The purpose of fluid power is to transmit power from one location to another. In the mid-1600s, Blaise Pascal, a French mathematician, made a very important contribution in the field of fluid motion. This contribution, known as Pascal's Law, relates the transfer of pressure through a fluid. Pascal determined that a contained pressurized fluid will exert pressure equally in all directions. Pascal's Law states that pressure set up in a confined body of fluid acts equally in all directions and always at right angles to the containing surfaces. Another important property of fluid mechanics was discovered in the late 1600s by Robert Boyle, an Irish physicist. Boyle's Law is an experimental gas law which describes how the pressure of a gas increases as the volume of gas decreases. A modern statement of Boyle's Law is the absolute pressure of a confined body of gas varies inversely as its volume, provided its temperature remains constant. In a physical system, this means that as the volume decreases, the pressure increases. Similarly, as the volume increases, the pressure decreases. Boyle's Law can be expressed mathematically as the pressure at state 1 times the volume at state 1 is equal to the pressure at state 2 times the volume at state 2. This is true as long as both the temperature and mass, or amount of gas, remains constant. In the late 1700s, Jacques Charles, a French scientist and mathematician, discovered an important rule regarding gases under pressure. Charles's law, also known as the law of volumes, is an experimental gas law which describes how gases tend to expand when heated. It states that if the pressure of a gas is constant and its temperature is raised, the volume will also be raised by the same ratio. Additionally, the inverse is true. If the pressure of a gas is constant and the temperature is lowered, the volume will also lower. Charles's law can be expressed mathematically as the ratio of the temperature at state 1 to the volume at state 1 is equal to the ratio of the temperature at state 2 to the volume at state 2. This law is true as long as the pressure and mass remain constant. In the mid-1700s, Danielle Bernoulli discovered another very powerful rule in the field of fluid mechanics. Known as Bernoulli's Principle, this rule is related to the theory of conservation of energy, which states that energy can neither be created or destroyed. In this fluid system, pressure is potential energy and fluid flow is kinetic energy. Bernoulli's principle states that an increase in the speed of an incompressible fluid occurs simultaneously with a decrease in pressure. This is illustrated by the flow of water through a pipe. The volume of water flow through all three sections is the same. When the water's flow is restricted in section B, the speed of the water increases to maintain the same amount of volumetric flow. This increase of speed simultaneously causes a decrease in pressure. When the flow of water reaches section C, the inverse occurs. The water flow decreases and the pressure increases. This rule can also apply to the types of energy present in the system. As the pressure decreases in section B, the potential energy converts into kinetic energy. This increases the speed of water flow and decreases the pressure. When the water reaches section C, the kinetic energy is converted back to potential energy. This is illustrated by the decrease in speed of the water flow and its simultaneous increase in pressure. Fluids used in mechanical systems come in many different types. The type of fluid chosen for a particular application depends on its characteristics. 
One of the most important characteristics of a fluid is its viscosity. Viscosity is defined as a fluid's resistance to flow. Fluids with low viscosity flow very easily. Water is a type of fluid with low viscosity. Fluids with high viscosity are more resistant to flow. Honey is a type of fluid with a high viscosity. Therefore, honey is more viscous than water. Another characteristic of fluids is the viscosity index. This rating relates the flow of a fluid with its temperature. Many fluids begin to flow more easily as temperature increases. The viscosity index is the measurement of this characteristic. A high viscosity index indicates a small oil viscosity change with temperature. A low viscosity index indicates a large oil viscosity change with temperature. Compressibility is another characteristic of fluids. It measures the change in volume of a fluid as a response to a change in pressure. Fluids, such as gases, are highly compressible. Their volumes change significantly when placed under pressure. Liquid fluids also have a compressibility factor. Water and petroleum-based hydraulic fluid are almost completely incompressible. They don't compress when put under pressure. This characteristic is what allows them to be used to transmit power in fluid systems. Years ago, water was used as the first hydraulic fluid because there was no other liquid available in such large quantities at such a low cost. There are some major drawbacks to using water as a working fluid. Due to its low viscosity, it is difficult to pump. Additionally, the speed at which it flows through the system causes an effect known as wire drawing. Wire drawing occurs when the water flow erodes or scores a pathway in the metal of machinery as it goes around corners and through orifices. It also has corrosive effects on metal machinery. Over time, petroleum-based hydraulic fluids have become much more cost-effective. For starters, it has a lower specific gravity than any other liquid and can be pumped with less power loss. It also lubricates as it works through the system and has little corrosive effects on metal machinery. Flammability is an issue, but with the development of synthetic oils, alternatives to water remain the preferred working fluid. Several factors should be considered when designing a fluid system that uses a petroleum-based hydraulic fluid. The first is cleanliness. Oil never wears out, but it can become so contaminated that it is unfit for further use. Fluid systems frequently employ filters throughout the system to help reduce contaminants. They may also require complete fluid replacement after certain time intervals, and this can become cost prohibitive with larger systems. Another factor common to hydraulic fluids are the use of additives. Additives can be used to reduce aeration and the production of bubbles as the fluid travels rapidly throughout the system. They can be used to administer corrosion inhibitors within the reservoir, and they can be used as a demulsifying agent, which helps the fluid resist mixing with water. The choice of modern fluids is so wide that when designing a new system, fluid characteristics such as viscosity, viscosity index, cleanliness, filtration, and additives should be considered as early as possible in the design process.